Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 14, the Homework Solution Edition, in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn artificial intelligence or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of iced coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the homework solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in episode number 14. Now, in lesson 14, I showed you how you could track, you could formally track an object in OpenCV based on training OpenCV around a certain color. So you could track an object of interest based on color. And what your assignment was, was to go in now and to do something meaningful with the position of your object of interest. And so sort of the homework assignment I gave you is the frame from your webcam, place the frame on your computer screen based on the position of the object of interest. Now I need you to leave a comment down below in the comment section. I am legend if you were successful or I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Now there were really two different ways to do this. There was the easy way and then there was the impossible way. And what I hope you guys see is almost all of these assignments I give you, there's a real easy solution, but you have to stop and you have to develop a strategy and you got to sketch it out. And if you do that, usually the coding turns out to be very interesting. So let's just, uh, very easy. So let's just jump right in and let me show you my solution. So what I will need you to do is fire up the most excellent Visual Studio code and we will close that. Uh, I need you to fire up the most excellent Visual Studio code. And then what we are going to do is we are going to come over and we are going to create a new program. And that new program is going to be OpenCV program 20, I do believe, and .py. And the .py is actually important and boom, a fresh new Python program, just waiting for you to write it. But actually, we don't want to write it completely from scratch. We want to start where we left off last week. If you're going through these classes, you ought to have last week's program. If you aren't, you can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. You come to this happy little search bar. Let me get my enormous noggin out of your way. You come to this happy little search bar and search on the term using contours and open CV. It should bring you to this page. You can click on these two little page icons and darn it, that is not working. Let me see if I reload this. I had this problem a minute ago, but if you give me just a second, we'll get to the bottom of this. There it is. Okay. Right mouse click and copy. Notice if you ever have problems, what I did was I, I uh, reloaded the page and then it worked. Okay. So we got that code from last week. Then we're going to come over here and we are going to paste it. And let me see if that looks like the right code. That does in fact look like the right code. Let's run this just to make sure that we can in fact copy and paste without breaking something. It's those small successes in life that, you know, that bring us a little joy. Yep, we can copy and paste. You see, we have a yellow object of interest and we are tracking it with a red bounding box. And so that is actually <clears throat> kind of neat and kind of interesting and what we did last week. But what we want now is we want to move, we want to move this frame that I'm in, this frame from the webcam, we want to move it around my screen based on where my object of interest is. Okay, so how would we do that? It is actually kind of easy and I really hope you guys figured this one out. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to come down here 
And you can see in this region where I say if the area is greater than or equal to 200, then I do this, uh, I, 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 I get, okay, I should explain this a little better, that the first thing I do is I create the mask for the object of interest. Then I look at that mask using find contours and I create my contours and then I step through my contours, okay, and then I calculate the area of the contour, and if the area is greater than 200, if it's not noise, if it's not noise, then it's a keeper, I use that one, and then I create a bounding rectangle around the individual contour, and that gives me x comma y, and w comma height, width comma height, all right, and so now that x y is the upper left corner position of my object of interest. And so right at this point, I know, I know where this, this corner is, the upper left corner. I know where that is because it is in fact x comma y. Well, I am going to give it a new variable name just, uh, you know, just to be good. I'm gonna say x position is equal to x and the y position is equal to y. And then if I'm gonna do that, I think that's I think that will work. All right. Now that is in pixels, and that sort of depends on what width and height I've set my frame to. It depends on a lot of different stuff. And the width and height of my little frame is different than the width and height of the screen. So I've got to kind of normalize that. So what I want to kind of do is I want to figure out like what fraction of the screen, what percentage of the screen am I over? So what I will do is I will say X position, okay, or uh, is equal to Y. Okay, now what I'm going to say is X position is equal to X position divided by width, okay? So there's a certain width of the screen if I divide my X position by that total width, I now have the percentage, I've got the fraction of where I am. So that would be sort of like, instead of saying that my frame goes from zero to, what was it, from zero to 960, instead of saying that my screen is gonna go from zero to 960, I'm gonna say that my screen goes from zero to one and 0.5 would be halfway over. So I'm normalizing in what you might think of as arbitrary units. Now, similarly, the Y position is gonna be equal to what? The Y position in pixels divided by what? The height in pixels. So now I've got X position and Y position in terms of uh, a decimal number. And remember that a lot of these things always want integers. And anytime I divide and I'm doing things in OpenCV, I'm going to go ahead and force it to an integer. And that way, like if I had uh, 9 divided by 2 or something like that, 4.5, it's going to make it an integer. Otherwise, you're going to have unexpected crashes in your program. So now, Mm, that would not be good though. Ah, okay. I, I can do that because what I'm going to do is now I've got to, uh, we'll do that at the very end because, <laughs> you know, of course, that just made everything zero when I did that because it's always going to be less than one. It's always going to round to zero. So let's do the complete calculation. Then we'll come back and make it an end. So now I have the position of where in my frame is it zero over or is it one over or 0.5 over and how far up and down it is. I have a relative fractional or decimal position of where this is in the frame coming from the webcam, All right? Now I've got to normalize that back to my big screen. So where do I want this to go? Well, if this is in the middle, if this is in the middle of my webcam frame, I want the webcam frame to be in the middle of my screen. So I have to normalize that zero to one width and that zero to one height. I got to normalize that now to my full screen. Well, I happen to know that the width of my screen is 1080 or is 1920. So I need to multiply that fraction by 1920. And that will tell me in pixels 
where I want to be on my whole computer screen. And similarly, my screen, the height is 1080, and so I want to multiply that ratio, that fraction by 1080, and that will give me the right up and down pixel position to put the overall frame. Now this is where always now that we have that good calculation, we want to make it an int so that our program doesn't unexpectedly crash when it gets a float when it wants an int. So we're forcing this to be an int. Sometimes it might not even be necessary to do that, but I just find that <clears throat> it's good practice because so many of these different commands down here actually wants integers. So I go ahead and make them integers. So now I have an X position and I have a Y position for my full computer screen. Well, what do I do? What do I do? It is as simple as this, where I come down here and I do the move window of my main frame, I want to move it where? I want to move it over by X position, and I want to move it over by Y position, because that will be, all right, so like, let's just take an example. Let's say this is in the middle of the webcam. This is in the middle of the webcam. That means that X position is going to be X position divided by width, that's going to be 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 times 1920 is going to be 960, and 960 for my whole screen is the middle of the screen. And similarly, if this is 0.5 up and down, if this is halfway, if this is in the middle, then Y position divided by height is going to be 0.5 times 1080 is going to be 540. It is going to then put my frame right in the middle of my screen. I sure hope this makes sense. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's so obvious. <clears throat> it is so obvious that now I am going to move my main window to wherever this was in the original webcam frame. So let's see, could it be that easy? Let's run this thing. Ooh, and it crashed. X position is not defined. What is that nonsense? Oh, I see. The first time through, the first time through the program, there is not an object of interest. And so when it gets down here, when it gets down here, it has not gone through this for loop or this if loop. So it has not seen X position and Y position yet. And so I just need to come up here when I'm defining variables and I need to give it an X position equals zero and a Y position equals zero. And that means that my frame will be in the upper left of my screen until it sees the object of interest, if I am thinking about this right. There it is. Why is it not moving around? because it has not seen the object of interest. And so I am going to sneak the object of interest in over here. And boom, it is locked onto it. And now as I slide across, it slides across and I can slide back. And now as I this is kind of hard, but as I bring it down, it brings it down, then I can bring it over and back up. Shazam! Who's your huckleberry? Look at that, okay? I can control the position of my window on my screen based on my object of interest. And hopefully you guys will see, I think I can kind of, ah! You see, I can try to kind of sneak it out of the screen like that and then hide it, but then it, it saw it. I really shouldn't sit and mess with it this much. Okay, there, <laughs> I got it out. I got it out. Okay, is this pretty neat? Can you see all the things that you could do? You could have different colors on your fingers and you could do different things controlling your computer. Ah, it sees a little glitch there of an object of interest and then like my hand looked yellow to it for a second. My hand looked yellow to it for a second and that's what happened. Here we go. We can't have that. Okay.
there. Uh, so what you can see is, is that you could input all types of different things by having gesture-based commands that the, the webcam could be looking for. The webcam could be looking for the object of interest, and depending on which object of interest it found and where it was, you could have your computer do different things. And just for the sake of illustration, I move my frame around based on the position of the object of interest. So I think that is just really neat. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have a little bookkeeping to do, I do believe. And uh, I need you to now let me know, were you able to do this homework? If you were, you're a legend. If you were not, you fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. If you did it, make sure that you're posting those homework solutions to YouTube so I can see them. Put a link in a comment and a link over to your video. When you post your video, make sure you put a link in the description back to my video, and that way everybody can kind of see what's going on. You guys need to go look at other people's, look in the comments and look at other people's solutions as well. Some of them are really good. Some of some of the solutions you guys are doing are way, way better than the solutions I did. I've been impressed with what I saw. So who is this person of mystery from last week? It is Von Neumann, okay? And he is like one of the most incredible people that ever lived lived, even though he's not really very well known. Uh, I'm not sure I haven't, uh, you know, I'm releasing this video before I release the one with the contest. So I don't, I don't know uh, how many of you guys actually recognized him, but he was the guy, he was first of all, a very famous mathematician, like a formal very, very sophisticated mathematician. He also did a lot of very important work in physics. And then he's kind of the guy that more or less conceptualized the digital computer, sort of like what would a digital computer look like? Well, you would need ones and zeros. You would need on off switches. You would, once you had that, then what you would need is you would need something to do processing where zeros and ones are like numbers. And then you would need to do something that, that like had memory. So you would need like a CPU, you would need memory, you would need all these things. So even before all the technology was available to create the computer, he in his mind had imagined the computer. So he was a really, really interesting and neat guy. Okay. I'm going to see if you guys are interested in these person of mystery contest if the, if you aren't I'll stop doing them but I just think it's kind of neat to know a little bit about history know a little bit about the guys that came before us and some of the interesting things like that and so for next week the person of mystery and you guys leave your answers not in the chat box on the premiere but leave your answers in the uh, leave your answers in the comments for the video and so our next person of mystery is this gentleman and I will be looking looking for the first correct answer. Who is he and why is he important? Okay, guys, I hope that you're having as much fun taking these videos as I am making them. If you enjoy them, make sure that you give me a thumbs up. Always leave a comment down below because that helps me with the old YouTube juice and gets these videos seen by more people. And that's really why I do them. I want to <laughs> I want to teach and to teach. I need people watching the videos and for people to be offered the videos, need lots of good comments comments and interaction with the audience. Okay, guys, this is Paul McCorder with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.